So here we are in chapter three then. And this chapter is going to be all about getting our character ready to animate with moving forward. So we're going to be rigging him. Um, and before we can move on though, there are a couple of housekeeping things that I should have done in the last step, but I forgot to. So we'll get those sorted now. Uh, the first of these is the fact that I didn't put a material on these two parts of his neck. So I'm just going to select both of those. We'll just go into the hypershade quickly, find my chrome material and assign material to selection. Like that. And then that will have this metallic material on. Next we want to just move our character up so that he's standing on the grid. And to do that I'm just going to select everything. But I'm just going to deselect his foot and reselect the foot and that will just put this um, controller down at the bottom. And then we're going to move into one of these views. And again a bit of housekeeping, let's just turn off the image planes. Like that and we'll need to turn on the grid for a minute just so that I can line this up. So it's about getting his feet onto this thicker black line here. And it doesn't have to be perfect but it does have to be close. That'll do there. So then we can just turn these grids back off because they just look ugly on video. And one final thing I want to do, and this is just a prep stage for later, that's to get all these parts of his body, all the geometry, and we're going to put this into its own layer. And that will mean that we can make that layer reference later so that we don't accidentally select it. But for now, we're just going to put it into the layer. So with everything selected, we'll click on Layers, and then we're going to go to Create Layer from Selected. And that'll put this, so if I just toggle the V, that everything that I had selected is in that layer. We will rename the layer to Geo, which is short for Geometry. And save it. Okay, now we're ready to start rigging. So, first of all, I can deselect everything and I need to change my menu set from Modeling to Rigging. And we get some new options up here. And the one that we want to open first of all, if we go to Skeleton, it is the Human IK option we click on that and it opens it up and then we get some tools here that we can use what we need to do is just click on the first button which will create a skeleton for us there it is and you can see that because of the way that we modeled our character the scale isn't too far off but you can see that it's not perfect because he's got arms coming out of his head which is not how most people work so we need to sort that scale out and we also want to make it so that we can just see the rest of the skeleton and in the viewport, there is an option for that. This little chap here, which is called X-Ray Joints, or you can also get it from, I think it's in show, no, in lighting, no, in shading, X-Ray Joints. Uh, but I'm just going to click it here, and then it will always show the joints on top. And so before we just start to get this scale correct, let's name this character so that we know what we're working with. So on this little drop down here, you can click on Rename Character and give it a name. I'm going to call it Rob for Rob the Robot. I know that's a little bit cliche, but I'm not feeling uber creative today. There we go. Right, now we need to just scale him down. Now there are different ways of doing this. You can just change the character scale in here. So if we go to something like 0 0.8, and that will scale it down. But then you see that sets it back to one and it's a bit finicky. So I'm just gonna undo that. And the way that I like to do it is there's this little controller here. If you select on that, so it's just a little cross between the legs. And you can use that to make sure that the scale tool is available to you. And for now, what I'm going to do is just switch to the front view, because what I'm most interested in is getting this hips controller in the center of the hips, about there. So whether or not the arms line up or the head's not important for now, we're just getting the hips in place and everything else will flow out from there. Okay, so that's pretty good. Now what we'll do, we'll leave the legs for now, we're going to work our way up the spine, but you can see... There's only one point at which the spine can bend because of the way we've constructed the robot, which means there are too many spine joints. So what we can do is here, in our settings, we can just take the spine joints down to one. And you'll see that will alter the way that our rig looks a little bit, but it also means it's a little bit more accurate as well. So now we can just move up to the next joint, which will be called something like spine or spine one. I forget what it is. The name is not important for now. We're gonna move that up to here which is the point at which you can see it will look like the, the little robot can articulate. So that's where we're going to place that. Next, we're going to work on the arm. And you can see that I'm working on this arm specifically. I'm never going to do anything on this side of the character. We just work on this side and then we can mirror it. So this little area here is essentially the clavicle. We're going to put that up to about there. 
And then this one here is going to be where the shoulder rotates from. And I'm just going to place that about there. Yeah, which makes sense. It's pretty much the center of this little shoulder joint we created earlier. Then we need to put the elbow in place. So that's going to be pretty much in the center of that joint we created. And then finally we need to move to this joint, oh, this joint here. And this is going to be where the hand pretty much connects. So you can see this is the bit where it needs to bend from. In fact, I'm probably going to put it about there so that the range of movement is not too high. And you can see that I was moving this across and I've now just moved that um, arm piece down. I need to check that that hasn't broken the definition. So what I'll do is just move over to this tab here. Everything here is green. It says characterization is valid. As long as everything is green, any changes that you make are okay. If they ever go orange, then you've done something wrong, you need to redo it. And you'll have noticed that so far, the way that I've moved all of these joints around is that I've moved them. I've used the move tool. If, however, I use the rotate tool, so I've moved that one down, but if I've done it by rotating, you see that these have now gone orange, which means bad, bad, bad. So undo that, make sure that all stays green. Now I'll just be flicking back and forth between these two tabs to make sure I'm not doing anything silly. Uh, but that there is going to do it for this part of the arm. What I need to do now is just check how it looks in the top. And we can see the answer to that is not great. So we're going to select these again. And I'm probably just going to press 5 on this and turn on x-ray joints just to make it a bit easier for me to work with. So we'll bring the arm forward at the shoulder. And then everything else should line up because it's at hierarchical structure which means that when you do something at the top of the chain everything below that follows it and you can see that the wrist i'm just about happy with i'll leave that there next we need to do the fingers and again we might need to make a change to the rig because i think we've got too many joints in the fingers for the amount of joints we've got in the hand that we modeled so i'm going to take the number of bones down to two and you'll see that reflected in the hand and I'm also going to just keep the thumb and the middle finger. You can see that there aren't individual fingers in this. It's just like a mitten. So we only need one finger to control it. So we'll take off the index, the ring, and the pinky. And that is all the hand we need. And then it's just about putting things in place. So it's where bends should happen, really. So I'm going to straighten this up. And then move that to where the bend should be. Same with this one. And then this one here is just going to go right out to the end of the finger or close enough. I'm overlapping it a bit because there's a bit of a slant to it. And then we're going to do something similar with the thumb. So that's going to bend about there. This one here is going to go about here. And this one's going to go out to the end of the finger or thumb. And then what we need to do is for the thumb, especially, I like to go into the 3D view to check this because you can see the thumb actually has a bit of the height. So the, the finger stays flat, but the thumb drops down a little bit. And a lot of people will model their characters in a way that that makes sense. I tend not to. So we'll get that part of the thumb. We'll just bring it up to about the middle, get the next joint, move that up a bit. And then the end of the finger should be fine. Okay, I think I'm happy with the arm. Next, we'll do the leg. So I'm going to move into the front view for this. You'll see I'll be changing my views fairly regularly for this to choose the one that makes the most sense. And then we're going to put this here. And it's not ever so important that this is in the center of this circle bit the, uh, or the sphere. This is actually more of an optical illusion. It makes more sense to have it where we want the leg to swing from. And I'm going to put it about there. Try and get it as central as possible. That looks good. And then we're going to get the knee, which is currently too low down. So we're going to drop that in place there. And then I'm probably going to change to the side view now to check where the foot should be. So yeah, that for the knee is fine. The ankle joint then is going to come down. And again, this needs to be where you want it to articulate. So for me, I think I want it to articulate about there. And then this part. I always used to think that it went right to the front of the foot, but it doesn't. It goes to the ball of the foot, which is about there in this case. 
perfect. And so there's only one more thing that we need to look at, and that's the head and the neck as well, I suppose. So this is the neck joint. We're going to move that up, and I think it's about there, but we need to check the side view for this as well. Uh, and yeah, that's pretty spot on. So remember that the way that the neck bends is just an illusion, really. Nothing actually bends. And then this bit here is the head. And this usually goes to the top of the head. So I'm going to go fairly central and up towards the top. Okay. So that is now all the bones in place. What we need to do now is have them mirror over. So this side's good. This side, not so good. So what we'll do is just click on this little icon here, and as long as we have this Rob character selected, it shouldn't matter what selection we have here. Some people think you need to select the bones that you want to mirror, but you can see I've got this top of his head selected here. If I just click on this icon, boop, there we go. He's now all mirrored. And that's all we need to do in this step, really. We've got the skeleton created. We've created a character definition we've called him Rob. We've put all the joints in the right place, and we've mirrored them over. So in the next step, we're going to be creating a control rig for the skeleton and also connecting the geometry to the skeleton so that when we move the skeleton, that will drive the movement of the character. So I will see you in the next step. I'm able to continue making these videos thanks to the ongoing support of my amazing patron community. If you'd also like to support Game Dev Academy via Patreon, then check out the link in the description below. Thank you.